Before 2003, laser demonstrated poor results due to underdeveloped technology, a lack of understanding of laser tissue interaction, and the use of incorrect techniques. This led to all lasers being banned for a decade. The absorption of laser light by tissue leads to the photoacoustic, photochemical, and photomechanical effect. This disrupts the molecular bond. The rapid conversion of water to water vapor produces an explosive increase in volume and generates stress waves. It rapidly removes the target thrombus, vaporizes procoagulant reactants, avoids a systemic lytic state, facilitates a junctive balloon angioplasty and scenting, as well as augmenting tissue plasmogen activator activity and suppressing platelet aggregation kinetics. The aim of 6L is to compare the outcome of laser-assisted angioplasty versus balloon angioplasty in tibial vessel occlusion in patients with CLI TAS-D. Our primary endpoint is sustained clinical improvement. Out of 572 patients diagnosed with CLI over a 5-year period, 90 patients underwent 102 tibial procedures on an emergency basis, all had TAS-D. We had more repeated procedures for tibial angioplasty than in the laser group. 80% of all our patients were diabetic, and one-fourth of all patients had chronic renal insufficiency. All patients had critical limb ischemia Rutherford category 4, 5 or 6 with TAS-D lesions. Two-thirds of lesions were de novo and occlusive. There was no significant difference between groups regarding lesion length, inflow or runoff. 85% had only one named disease tibial artery. 60% of all patients had no duplex proof of patent vessel beyond the ankle. The main goal is to maximize the runoff and establish a continuous inline flow beyond the ankle. The anterior posterior tibial arteries are the preferred targets. Total occlusions are crossed with 014 or V18 guide wires supported with the Crick Cross catheter. Long Invitec balloons 2.5 and 3.5 mm are typically used with a length 80 to 220 mm. We cross from the posterior tibial artery to the dorsalis pedis, creating a pedal arch loop to enhance the outflow and heal deep foot ulcers. In some cases, the wire might extend through the TMA to the exterior and yield the exchange of catheters, balloons and stents easier to handle. Slow laser catheter advancement at the rate of 0.5 mm per second is required to maximally ablate the target tissue with saline infusion and multiple passes. Any attempt to rapidly advance the laser catheter defies the principle governing laser-induced plaque debulking and causes dilation rather than vaporizing the plaque. Saline infusion and slow advancement have resulted in the virtual elimination of perforation, acute thrombosis, major dissection and spasm. We must try to vascularize two tibial arteries if it is feasible. Concomitant proximal angioplasty was performed through the sub plane more commonly in the TBA group. There was no difference in the number of stents inserted for both groups. Technical success was defined as residual stenosis of less than 30% after TBA or laser. Technical success was 80% in the laser group. We had no related procedure mortality. Immediate clinical improvement, which is statistically significant, was observed in the laser group with 80% improvement to Rutherford category 3 or less with better hemodynamic success. Sustained clinical improvement was statistically significant in favour of laser at 5 years, 76% versus 62%. Binary rest stenosis was statistically in favour of laser at 5 years, at 78% versus 49%. Freedom from endovascular target lesion redo procedures, including the EDGE phenomena, was statistically significant in favour of laser up to 5 years at 93% versus 62%. Freedom from endovascular target extremity redo procedures, where problems arose outside the lesion that was initially treated, was enhanced with laser at 88% versus 78%. A subtraction of TLR from TUR rates yields a rate of revascularization performed due to progression of arteriosclerosis. This was significantly higher post tibial balloon angioplasty and highlights the systemic effect of laser on target vessel revascularization. There was no difference in amputation-free survival, 95% for laser versus 89% for TBA. Major adverse clinical events at 5 years were significantly more pronounced in TBA, 38% versus 66%. Cox proportional hazard ratio showed that chronic renal failure, stent placement and lesion length are greatest in TLR, TUR and MACE. Laser proved to be significantly more cost-effective than TBA, with an incremental cost-effectiveness ratio exceeding €2,000 per quality. Quality of life was significantly enhanced with laser. We found that osteo lesions with distal poor runoff vessels are better managed with laser with less prospect of distal embolization. Laser ameliorates PTA when the wire can cross but not the balloon. Reducing the rate of immediate failure amplifies patency in limb salvage. Redo crural PTA can successfully treat previous failed endeavors. Subsequent bypass grafting is not spoiled. Tibial endovascularization bestows an exceptional outcome in CLI task D. It is an ethical must to treat CLI patients using aggressive procedures in an effort to improve the quality of their borrowed time. Finally, laser is cost-effective and offers superior quality of life.
It boasts outstanding survival rates, free from major clinical events, at 5 years.